Hi, I'm Shannon Farrell, Agricultural Law Specialist with the Oklahoma State University Department of Ag Economics, and today we're going to talk about Oklahoma water law. Now, that's a topic we could talk about for a full day, but we can talk about the basics of water law fairly quickly. Now, under Oklahoma law, there are basically three different forms of water. The first form is water that hasn't yet reached a stream bed that's running across the surface. So we call that runoff or diffuse surface water. That's governed by one area of law. The second area is stream water, and that's what you would traditionally think of, water that's actually reached a stream bed. That's governed by its own set of laws. And then groundwater, which is obviously fresh water underneath the earth, and that's governed by another separate set of laws. Now that first type of water that we talked about, diffuse runoff or surface water, is like we said, water that may have come from storm water that hasn't yet reached a stream bed. Because once it reaches a stream bed, it's stream water and it's dealt with by that system. But before it's reached a stream bed, landowners under Oklahoma law have the right to capture that water and use it for their own purposes. They don't have to have a permit for that. It's basically owned water. And by the way, that's the only type of water under Oklahoma law that can really be owned by the surface owner. So the way that that water is regulated is that oftentimes landowners will build ponds or other sorts of catchment systems to catch that water before it reaches a stream bed. So you might see that in the form of ponds, stock tanks, or that form. Now remember, once that water reaches a stream bed, it's governed by stream law. And here's where things start to intermingle a little bit. Under Oklahoma law, landowners are allowed to build dams across streams to capture that runoff water even though it may actually at that point be stream water. However, at that point in time, if you do want to build a dam, there are certain safety rules that you have to follow for the dam construction, and you probably also want to consult the Oklahoma Water Resources Board to make sure that downstream landowners are enabled to get the amount of stream water that you might accidentally be capturing with your dam. So, that's surface water or diffuse runoff. That's probably the most simple area of law we have to deal with with water. Now that next area of law, stream water, is again exactly what you think of when you hear the word stream water. It's water that has reached the cut banks of a stream. And that's basically the definition under Oklahoma law. If you can kind of discern that there's a stream bed and water's entered it, then it's now stream water. Now stream water is different from that surface water that we talked about. Stream water is regarded by Oklahoma law as being a public resource. So whenever someone wants to use stream water, they basically have to have some form of legal authorization to do so. Now, there are two ways that that happens. First off, in Oklahoma, if a landowner owns land along the beds of the stream, we call them a riparian landowner. And the virtue of being a riparian landowner is that you can allow, you're allowed to make certain uses of that stream water, what we call domestic uses, and you don't have to have a permit to do that. Domestic uses are things that you would kind of think about as being household uses. Number one, water that's used in your own home for cooking, cleaning, drinking, sanitation, those sorts of uses. Um, water that's used for grazing livestock up to the natural grazing capacity of the land. Now, if we have something like a feedlot, that's different. Use of the water for a feedlot is going to require a permit. But if we're just talking about grazing cattle, no permits necessary. Also, if we're irrigating crops for our own consumption, like a garden or an orchard, no permits needed. That's a domestic use as well. But if you want to use stream water for a use other than that, even if you own land on the stream or if you don't own land on the stream, you've got to have an OWRB water appropriation. That means that OWRB goes through the process of determining what you're going to use the water for, how much water you're going to use, and then determining if there's enough water to allocate you the use that you're proposing while still giving everyone else who's already applied for use of that stream an amount of water that they need as well. We call that a prior appropriation system. So if you're a riparian landowner and you want to use stream water for non-domestic use, or if you don't own land along the stream and you want to make any use of the stream water, you have to have an OWRB appropriation. What you'll do is you'll fill out an application that will say how much water you want to use, what you want to use it for. You're going to need to show the calculations about how you arrived at that amount of water use. And then you have to provide notice to everyone in the area through publication of a notice in the local legal newspaper that you're applying for this appropriation. If there's enough interest in it, OWRB will hold a hearing to figure out if there is enough water to allocate to all the uses along that stream. And then if OWRB makes all those determinations and determines that there is enough water available, then you may be able to receive your permit. Now, once you receive your permit, you'll be required to make annual reports 
of how much water that you use. And in Oklahoma, we have something of a use it or lose it system. If you don't use your water appropriation, that appropriation could basically go away and be put back into the pool. So that's the very short version of how we allocate stream water in Oklahoma. Now there's a third version of water that we talked about, and that is groundwater. And groundwater, like we said, is defined as fresh water under the surface of the earth. And we say fresh water because we make that distinction between salt water. Salt water is regarded as water that has a dissolved solid content of greater than 5,000 parts per million. So if it's got that water dissolved solids content, we regard that as salt water and that's handled almost as a pollutant. But if we're talking about fresh groundwater, first off, groundwater is regarded as something of a right tied to the ownership of the surface. In other words, unless we can show a compelling reason why a landowner shouldn't be allowed uh, groundwater use, generally the presumption is to give the landowner that groundwater appropriation. Groundwater, like we talked about with stream water, can be used for domestic uses, household use, watering cattle up to the grazing capacity of the land, watering an orchard or garden that's less than three acres and not for commercial use, and that doesn't require a permit. But if you're going to use water for anything else, such as watering for an animal feedlot or watering for a center pivot irrigation system or something else that's not domestic, again, you have to go through the approval process. So much like with stream water, a groundwater application is going to ask for how much groundwater that you're going to use, what the use is for, and how you arrived at the amount that you're going to need. Now, in addition to publishing notice of your application in the local newspaper, you're also going to have to mail notice of your application to anyone who owns land within a quarter mile of where your proposed well location is. That gives any other potentially affected landowners the chance to comment on whether or not there is enough water available for you to get the amount that you're applying for. Once you do that, again, the application process goes to OWRB, there may be a hearing, and then if there's no other evidence that shows that we shouldn't be able to give you the amount of groundwater that you're applying for, then the groundwater permit's gonna be issued. So, as we've talked about, there are three basic areas of water in Oklahoma. There's that surface water, stream water, and groundwater. Each one of them has a different legal system for allocating its use and governing how you go about getting that use approved. But if you need any help with this, or if you're concerned about how you can go about securing and preserving your water rights, contact your local OSU Extension office and we'll be happy to help.